don't know you're in the spirit until you feel the spirit. How do I know when I'm in the Holy Ghost? No, what was your first clue? You will feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Your body will be upon your mortal body. You have been quickened. It was dead in trespasses and sin, but now you're alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. I'm in the Spirit. There it went, just flowing down my backbone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank God. How it could be a demon. And what is the demon? What's his name? How many of them are there? And what is their power level? Is it oppression, obsession, depression, repression, recession, obsession, possession? What's the level of takeover of those demons? Is it in your spirit, your soul, possessing you? Or is it in your other body, your carcass, attached to you and oppressing the flesh? And even as cancer, for instance, penetrating the flesh, not the soul, but the outer man. Yeah. Though my outer man perish, my inner man is being renewed day to day. See? So if it's in the flesh, uh, and it's a spirit of infirmity, which is a sick demon, the discerning of spirits gift will tell you what that is and all about it. Now, if you have a spirit of infirmity, please do not go to the doctor or to a hospital. Because as Jesus said, you won't get out till you pay the very last farthing, Jesus. which is about one hundred fifty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's getting bad. All right. Mm -hmm. If you have a physical disorder, the doctor could probably help you, maybe. But if he tells you, I don't know what it was you. And I've took 73 x-rays, and I still can't find out what's wrong with you. And you don't have physical ailment. You have a spirit. Jesus. Jesus dealt many times with spirits of infirmity. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a spirit of infirmity, you might just well forget the doctor, because he don't know nothing about that. Amen. He don't even believe in that. Jesus. He'll talk you out of that. Mm -hmm. you know? mm. If you have a spirit, that's making you afflicted, you will have to find somebody that operates in the spirit world or you'll never get rid of it. Because the doctor ain't going to move it. Now, on the other hand, if it's physical, he, he might help you. He probably will help you some. But there you go. Discerning of spirits helps you to discern the spirit world and what's going on in it. Now, gift number three. The word of wisdom. So important. Because the word of wisdom, by definition, if you're recording it, is how to apply what to do in a given situation. How to handle the knowledge that you've received. What commandment to give the candidate. That's the person you're ministering to. What commandment to give the candidate that will cause him to be linked to his miracle. That's so powerful. Because that's exactly how Jesus ministered all through the Gospels and spent whole chapters dealing with one person. And what did he tell them, those people in those their parish chapters? Uh, you go jump in the lake. You climb a tree. You climb down a tree. You go get me a mule from the hitching pole. You follow a man with a water pot on his head. You, Peter, go fishing. The first fish you catch, open his mouth, take the money out, go pay our tax man. This proves that if you catch the right fish, you always pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I relate to the laughter speeches. <laughs> Pick up your bed. Stretch forth your hand. Here, let me spit in your eye. One time he spit on a man's tongue. I promise you I won't do that tonight to you. I'll, I'll be modest. I don't have a strong ministry as Jesus had. Amen. Hallelujah. Stuck his fingers in a man's ears. And be in the hair. And whatever he told them to do, when they got up and they did what they were told, 
they were healed while they were building up. God show yourself to the priest, you ten lepers. I want to be healed. I said go show yourself to the priest. Never mind what you want. You're not going to get it your own way. You're going to get it God's way. God's way. That's right. Halfway to the priest, they looked down and the leprosy was gone. See, when they obeyed the commandment, that was the word of wisdom, that Jesus gave them instruction, they obeyed it, and that obedience was a work. Say work. 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 Faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. But faith with works right. is alive. Yes. It's just as so as they did something, they proved they had faith in it, or they wouldn't have done it. See? Uh, Pick up my bed? I can't pick up my cell. Quit worrying about it and do what you're told. Do it. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Wow. I couldn't do that for 40 years. What happened? Uh, you obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. It is. Yes. And to hearken in the fat of rams. It's rebellion. That's the sin of witchcraft. And all idolatry. And thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Amen. Okay. Where to wisdom? How to apply? What to do in a given situation? What commandment to give the candidate that if they do what uh, they're told, they'll be healed while they're doing it. Now, this is why it's important to tell them to do the right thing. Yes, that's right. I, I can't tell you to jump off a cliff. I can't uh, tell you to. Uh, Go wash in the pool of Silo because if you leave the meeting tonight, you probably won't come back. You'll go home. So I have to find something to tell you to do that's in the four walls of this building, and it has to be the word of wisdom. And when you're healed because of it, that proves that the word of wisdom was here and it worked. It operated. All right. Now let's get to the next three the gift of faith. The gift of faith is God's faith in, imparted to man. Now let me show you faith. First, there's natural faith. If I go over that wall and flip that switch, that light will go on. I believe that. If I flip it back, the light will come on. That's just natural faith. Well, I didn't mean to flip it over. <laughs> <laughs> Now, number two, saving faith. I go to the altar of repentance, the old-fashioned altar of prayer, and I ask God to forgive my sins because I'm repenting of my sins. I'm, I'm not down there praying because I got caught. Sinning. That's just confession. Of it. I have to confess because it caught me red-headed anyway, so I have to confess. But when I decide to quit sinning and sin no more, <clears throat> tobacco smokers, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then I've repented. That's right. And if I go back and do the same thing that I uh, yeah. had already repented of, I'm back in a worse shape than once before. The worst shape. So repentance means not sorry you got caught, sorry enough to quit. Right. Hallelujah. Thanks. If I build again, the things I once destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. That's right. They'll ask me one time, I don't understand, Brother Clark, why I'm dying of lung cancer. <laughs> I said, I understand why you're dying of lung cancer. You are defiling your temple with the unclean spirit of nicotine. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If any man defile the temple, him shall God destroy. So I understand why you're dying of lung cancer. You are defiling the temple and God is killing you. That's all. I don't think I want to die young. I'm going to just make the sacrifice and live to be an old man by not smoking. Come on. Uh -huh. I told you your children tonight that you understand that, don't you? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But don't worry, the prayer's coming later tonight, a few more minutes. We'll, we'll be making you sick as a dog at the pit of your stomach at the next time of smoke. And you puke your guts out the next time you smell it. Amen. Amen. Ho-ho. 
So much in the next word in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Gift of faith. God's faith imparted to man. Natural faith. There's saving faith. But then there's a gift of faith. That, that's not faith that you got. That's faith that God has. He, he gave it to you. It's a gift. Now, if I write you a million dollar check, dear sister, uh, you have any trouble receiving it? Of course you don't. But it's not going to do you no know, good for me to write it if you don't receive it. I said the work's already done. Why don't you receive it? Jesus. You've been here for 2,000 years. But Hallelujah. I got to receive it. I got to receive it. I got to do it. It was appropriate. The work's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say something else about faith and wisdom now that I get as far as faith. Gift of faith is the most important gift in your ministry. The second most important gift is the word of wisdom. Because you need those two things first, because the other seven gifts is for everybody else that you're ministering to, but and they also can receive faith and wisdom. But you're the first guy that needs faith and wisdom. Why is that? Because faith is the accelerator that starts your car. Get you going. The word of wisdom is the steering wheel and the brakes. Guides you and stops you before you go off the cliff. Say faith and wisdom. Faith and wisdom. If you're going to be a Holy Ghost operator, you got to have faith and wisdom first. And then the other seven will emanate out to other people along with faith and wisdom, but you're the first guy in these faith and wisdom. You need an accelerator, a steering wheel, and a set of brakes. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got it? Amen. Amen. All right, now the gifts of healing, by definition, is a gradual, progressive restoration of healing in your physical body or in anything but particularly the physical body it's not instant that's miracle healing is gradual progressive restoration and when it hits it comes it gives you a sign of marked improvement and a change and then it's into remission from then on day by day by day now, the work of the miracles. Instantaneous work of God right immediately happening to the physical body or to the elements, the wind, the rain, the storm, the, any supernatural instant happening is the work of the miracles. Now, somebody wants a miracle. They don't want a healing because it takes too long to get the healing. Yeah. yeah, well, you go to the hospital and let them cut on you, and you go home and lay in bed for six months. You'll be glad for God to heal you in six That's days. That's right. Amen. Well, six years. But I, my problem is so big that I can have an instant work. I can have a miracle. And in fact, I needed it yesterday. I don't have time to wait on a healing. It'd be better for you to get a healing then. Well, why is that? Because in a healing, you have to use your faith today. Heal your faith. Tomorrow. Amen. The next day. The next day. <laughs> and the next day. Amen. When you finally get your complete healing, you not only have healing, you got faith too. You got faith and healing. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> So much for getting spoiled by having an instant gratification. However, God loves you so much that He will do many instant works here tonight. Jesus. Yeah. I I don't need to go through the last three, but I will. In case there's any uh, children of God here tonight. Gift of tongues. That is a message to the church that must be interpreted. I may already do that. 
Now, someone said to me one night, Brother Clark, uh, so-and-so was out here in the meeting tonight talking in tongues, and we stopped him. I said, what would you do that for? Well, there was no interpretation. I said, how do you know he was talking to you? <laughs> <laughs> now, First Corinthians 12 and chapter 14 tells us that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh unto God. Yes. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Not supposed to edify yourself. David said, I will encourage myself in the Lord. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speak of mysteries, for no man, devil, or beast understands him. I got a way to pray that the devil don't even know what I'm praying about. Jesus. <laughs> when I pray in tongues, I, it takes a big load off me because I can't think of what to pray for lots of times. Mm -hmm. When I start praying in tongues, I, I'm, I'm on uh, standby. I'm on the bypass. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it just flows. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is doing all the praying, so the Holy Ghost knows what the, the needs are and who to pray for. And I don't know what's going on. I'm just praying in tongues, and the Holy Ghost is doing the work. And sometimes I want to find out, because Paul said, I will pray in the Spirit, and I'll pray with the understanding also. So if I really want to know what I'm praying about, I'll look into the interpretation of tongues and see what, I, what it is I am praying about. Make any sense to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the gift of tongues is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is the evidence of the speaking uh, of being filled with the Spirit by the initial uh, evidence is the tongue. See, if God don't get your tongue, He don't have all of you. He got all of you but the tongue. Now, the tongue is a deadly evil that no man can tame. Can't control it. Only God, who is not a man, can control your tongue. And God, who is a spirit, controls your tongue. You speak a language you didn't learn under the university. Now we know that you're baptized. You're not 99% no more. You're 100%. You're clumped and dumped and buried and put beneath the flow and overflowed. You walk into the Holy of Holies and the power hits you in the head. You were about to blow a gasket, but <laughs> something said, why don't you open your mouth and let the pressure off? So I did. The pressure was off, and I was a tongue talker, and I was baptized in the Spirit. God, water, and Spirit. Oh, praise God for the tabernacle. All right, getting back. That was rich. <laughs> you didn't feel it, but I enjoyed it a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so we have here uh, the gift of tongues is a message to the church. And if I'm not talking to you with the tongues, leave me alone. Because I'm either talking to God, edifying myself, or speaking mysteries, and that's what it is a mystery. If it's a mystery, you're not supposed to know what I'm talking about. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes. All right, now, interpretation of tongues. That is where you have the gist and the thing. It's not going to be exactly the same as somebody else will do it. But the idea, the theme, the basic message is conveyed in the interpretation. Well, I thought I had the interpretation of that message in tongues, but Sister Jones got ahead of me, and it didn't come out like I felt was going to come out of me. Well, then just pay attention to what was said. She might have started at the beginning or at the end, and you would have started at the beginning, see. She might have used the 50-cent word because uh, she knows 50-cent words. And God uses personality. You don't just change into something else just because a gift works through you. You might only know a 10-cent word. You might know a 50-cent word. The word means the same thing. Listen to what God is saying in the message Amen. and it won't be much different than how you give it the people get the idea now watch jesus he spoke in tongues three times in the gospels epithet what the what says of the gospel writer uh, i'll write it like he said it epithet. later on he got the interpretation filled it in and said which bible 
interpretation means be open. Now, if you didn't know the interpretation of that time, just watch and see what happened. The theaters were open. See the theme? The theme is what is happening at the time. God don't have two trains on one track. He is not the author of confusion. Talitha mm -hmm. Kumai, what did he say? Later on, he got the interpretation and said, Young maid, I say unto thee, arise. 